Good day, YouTube. I hope you're all well. Welcome to episode nine of our Hattrick Manager series. We are now in full swing of our training cycle, but have made some tweaks to the plans. We also look at the players we have brought in and sold. And then to finish off the episode, we do a youth pool. Are we gonna get anyone good? If you wish to watch more amazing videos like this one and further content from Hattrick and Football Manager, I would highly recommend you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any future videos. Right, let's jump right in. Last episode, we went through our training cycle. I think I've changed it a little bit of how I want to do it. And I think I was basing it on playmaking because that's what I knew. And then I did some formulas and working out sort of what could be the most effective one, which we will go through in a second. Then we buy some players. Again, I will take you through that in a minute. But to get an idea of why I went for these players, let's bring up my Excel sheet. So this is training. I haven't updated the sheet for this week yet, but let me just quickly take you through what my thinking is. And again, I've watched some videos. I've read some stuff online. I've read of the Hattrick Wikipedia to really, really try and build my knowledge of how training works. So I was kind of in a position of where, you know what, I'm going to, because I train playmaking and you can only do train six core and then four, which get half trained. Yeah, I'm playmaking uh, because they play out for wing. And I was thinking to myself, well, how does that work within what I require? And I was just trying to think, oh, maybe I could do sh like attackers forwards. because that's free, uh, produce six players for me. How about those six players need something that I can't offer them? Or maybe defending, I could actually get more than six players. Or how long How long is it going to take me? Maybe with shooting, I need to train up five areas or four areas and, and so forth. And is it worth me doing? But I also want to make sure that I'm choosing the right one for my first training cycle. This is my first ever. I've been playing for game for years, on and off. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So... What have I looked at? So if we go to best core, and this is for, this is taken from one of um, Uncle Mitch's videos, or Papa Mitch. I think he's changed his name now to Papa Mitch and not Uncle Mitch. And obviously, this is kind of the values of how much you could possibly make if you get to this type of rating. I mean, this could, uh, for video could have been done like four years ago, but it's still net for values might not be. But it still gives you an idea. I mean, goalkeepers are going to be more expensive because obviously you can only train two for value and from what's required for players. I did a bit of a count and a bit of a table together to actually try and work out who do I want to train and what actually training cycle do I want to do. So working backwards of what I want to do, uh, central defence. So central defenders, I'm going to train up. And the reason behind that is because in my table, they got three greens four yellows no ambers and no reds so what that told me is that they are going to be for most efficient training position where i can make good money and it's going to be easy for me to do and i'll give you a couple of examples on that so wing backs full training count because they need to train on winger here you can only train four core whereas on a central defender i can train five on defending five on playmaking so 10 sorry 10 then it's six and four and a half so you can still make a bit of money buy some extra playmakers and sell them off and then again pass in so i could do two batches of some players just to bring in a, li a little bit of money train them up quickly over two seasons and then sell them and then i'll keep my six six core obviously i'll keep my three sell my other three and then i'd probably review where else can i train another six and that'd be defensive midfielders but what i want to do is actually want to see for results of four seasons of how these center defenders do learn from it and then see from my learnings of who else and where else can i train because then the other day you could always then these six players you can then move on and push them into wing back somehow two seasons winger or one season winger and then one season playmaking as you can see that i'm gonna train up six core we're gonna keep 
two really good defenders uh, that we had previously. They are obviously 13 and 11 in defending. I believe once I get my last one in, Andy, Andy Carlo will be sold because he's the eldest. So we will keep them and then we will keep Ian Barlux as a backup for this season. Extended day is just filling a hole. Patrick Ludwig, again, he's not one of our core players. He's he's actually our first team striker for now uh, because we'll probably end up getting rid of David Firk because Patrick Ludwig is pretty good all round, to be fair. He's got scoring 11 and 12 playmaking. So actually we could play him in, in playmaking because we trained him last season in playmaking and got him up. And then we have really good playmakers in the middle who are also training at the moment in defence, obviously to just build their defending up. Because then for last cycle, so they're going to have good defending after two seasons, and then they're going to have good passing. And most likely those three, we will probably just leave in our team in that playmaking position, because they will be pretty, pretty good uh, by then. I mean, playmaking at the moment, they're 13, 14, 13. So they are on their way of, we go best core. Obviously it's 18, so I could have trained them for another couple of seasons and then moved them on. But I want to do this training cycle and it just makes sense. It's a sacrifice to take. But if we can get their defendings up to say 8, 9 and then get their passing up to again probably 10, 11, that'd be amazing. That'd be great for me uh, to have. I mean, I, I'm in Division 5, so my expectation is to not have the best, not have this type of stats, but to be aiming for it. And I think that's where I was beforehand to build in my team. I didn't know in positions where I needed to build. I do now. So who have we brought? So we get back into the game. So now we're back in game. We get transfers. Oh, Roly Colin. Colin. He was one of our players. He was he one of our yeah. Oh yeah, forget that. We got this now. So we sold him not long ago, actually. So nearly a month ago for 1.1 million and they already want their money back and good thing is we'll make a little bit of percentage on that as well which would be great so we bought a player called Lo a badger let's go to him what did i buy him for so yep so youngster 1879 he's got formidable passing nine so that's a good start on that front and then playmaking it's pretty naff, that's where he's going to be poor on compared to where we need to get. I brought this player before I knew for information that I now know. But it's fine, I mean, I, I'm very happy that he's a 9 in passing. And he's a solid in defending as well, so that's good. And then we brought Ruben Sanchez Maledo. Uh, so he's 24-61, so he's not one of our youth. He's just a coverage for our playmaking uh, to sit on the bench. And I bought him for 23,000, so not much at all. And then we sold three of our playmakers, actually. Hence why we needed to bring in that player. So obviously we've sold three for 2.5, 3.5, 3.8 million. We sold three players and I bought one playmaker in to sit on my bench, basically, for 23 grand. So amazing there. And then we bought in a, another youngster. Spent a little bit of money on him, so for just over 300k. But... He's sitting in a good place so he's 17 and 72 days he's a defending in excellent he's playmaking six and he's passing six so he's where we want him to be obviously it would be great if he was solid solid but that's the next step up for him in playmaking and passing so it won't take him long yeah i'm looking forward to seeing this guy go up we will see it's quite funny that this team actually bought on 1st of march they bought him for 399k so nearly 400k and he was 17 and six and then sold him for 304k 305k to me so they made a loss so that's the transfers i want to buy another player like hung kwan yup in next video we will go we will look at the league see where performing it's very early stages and to be fair over the next few seasons it's not last season was oh can i get to division four whereas actually now over the next few seasons it's actually how do i get better with my team and how do i get those top players and how do I build team spirit and things like that? So I'm not going to show you. Obviously, I'm third in the league at the moment, but we're not going to go in detail of that. Today, we are going to sort out my youth team quickly. I'm going to take a chance on this guy and hope that he's got winger solid and then sell him. Because what is he? 17 11. Yeah, because if he's got solid winger, we might actually make a little bit of money. Might be our first one. Come on. Come on. Solid winger. Solid winger. 
Nej, men nog jag make any money with him. Transfer compare. A uh, little bit. A little bit of money. Let's go 20k. So, right. Now, let's go call our scouts. Call. So this one, 16, weak, inadequate. No. And then 16, inadequate, inadequate, weak. No. And then, ooh, two inadequates. 16 again. Poor passing. Inadequate in vet department. Playmaking. Inadequate overall skills. Okay, well, we was going to take him anyway, even whatever he was. Let me know how you're getting along in the comment section uh, on for hat trick season. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you would like to watch more videos like this, please subscribe. And to be notified, click on the bell.